Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, all praise is honor and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Kakudash. The more honest to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who taught us his truth and who rule well. Peace, love, salutations, and mercy be unto the hopeful elect. There be many more with us. There be many more with us. And what does that mean? That means that we have help, all right, from Yahweh our power, from Yahweh Shai, and from the angels. All right, which when things get bad, as they will, according to the scriptures, all right, when you go into Daniel's the 12th chapter, verse one, it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And what book is that? That book is the Lamb's book of life. All right. That's what the elect are written in. All right. That's what the ones that have been showing uh, faith with good works all right, are written in. And when the time of trouble comes, the time that is unlike any other time of trouble that have ever been upon the earth. All right. Because we have had different times of trouble, but nothing like what's getting ready to come. All right. In the, re in the regard of uh, the time of Jacob's trouble. All right, which we're in the beginning stages of that as of now. All right, and things are going to get so bad for us that Michael the Archangel is going to have to stand up, all right, to fight for us, all right, which he's going to come with Yahweh Shai, you know, because Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Michael the Archangel and Yahweh Shai is the same individual. No, they're separate. And the scripture that shows you that is the two, two chapters back. When you go to the book of Daniel, the 10th chapter, and you go to verse 13, it says, But the prince of the king of Persia withstood me. All right, now the one that's speaking within this, this particular verse, this is Yahweh Shai. Now let's see who he said came to help him. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in 20 days. But lo, all right, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I, re I remained there with the king of Persia. So Michael helped Yahweh Shai work on the mind of the, of the king, all right, the, the, the kingdom. I'm sorry. He helped him work on the mind of the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which at this time was Cyrus. All right, and our Lord is working on the mind of the, of the other nations as of now. All right, he's working on the minds of the kings of the earth. To draw them into World War III. And he's working on the mind of the rulers of America on the left hand side to do certain agendas that will bring about the time of trouble that will be unlike any other time of trouble. And in that day, we're going to need help. Now, our help isn't going to come from our flesh and blood in a chapter to show you that. It's Psalms 146, all right? Because you got a, a a guy that can be puffed up with vain pride and thinking that he's going to do something. And next thing you know, the Lord has it to where he shoots himself, man. All right, and now you're left without any guidance. You're left out without any instructions, without any instructor. All right, and you're you're, you're like a, a, a sheep with no shepherd, <laughs> Hey, the book of uh, Psalms 146, in verse 1, it says, Praise ye, Yahweh. All right, praise ye, Yahweh, O my soul. All right, that's who we're supposed to praise. Through his son, Yahweh Shah, we're supposed to praise Yahweh, the heavenly father. All right, we seek Yahweh through his son, Yahweh Shai. While I live, will I praise Yahweh. I will sing praises unto my power while I have any being. All right, so as you live... The whole duty of man is to seek Yahweh and to keep his commandments to the best of your ability. You know, you're supposed to praise him. You're not supposed to put your trust in anything else besides him. You know, not in any idols, all right, not in any deities, all right, but you're supposed to put your trust in the power of heaven, man. You're not supposed to put your trust in man because as the scriptures say, vain is the help of man. Matter of fact, the following verse reads this. It says, put not your trust in princes, nor in the sons of men, the son of men, 
in whom there is no help. Now the son of man in this regard, because we know in other scriptures, our Yahweh Shai is called the son of man. The son of man in this particular verse is not speaking about Yahweh Shai. All right, because that's who our help is going to actually come from. All right, it's going to come from our Lord and Savior, the one whom the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his true name is Yahweh Shai. All right, the son of man in this particular verse is actually the son of man. All right, it's actually, you know, uh, uh, men that live on the planet Earth with you. All right, for an example, the individual that leaves the NFAC, the not fucking around crew, all right, whose name is uh, Grandmaster J. All right, that individual, all right, it's, it's, it's been made known, all right, that he's an agent. All right, he was at a Trump rally. All right, and he's an um, agent provocateur. All right, he's set up through uh, COINTELPRO. You know, uh, what, what's that? What's another? Uh, uh, to lead a control opposition so that he can leave Jake to their doom, you know, as a Judas goat. But the Most High Heavenly Father had it to where he shot himself as a, at a rally. All right, he shot himself at a rally. And he left all of the people that were to be followers of him stranded. And he got them thinking that they can trust in arms to deliver themselves from the so-called white man. Your army isn't huge enough, man. Ne neither do you have the weaponry that, that, that is capable of bringing Esau Edom down, man. It's going to take someone far greater and stronger and mightier and more powerful than you to do that. And we're going to get into who that is within this lesson. But just to read this again, put, put not your trust in princes, nor in the son of men in whom there is no help. All right, his breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, and that very day his thoughts perish. You know, so when Grandmaster Jay cheddar bobbed himself, all right, in that very same hour his thoughts perish. Whatever he thought that he was going to do, man, it was so embarrassing. All right, and he was talking all of that stuff, all the Lord set me up and Yahweh set me up and trying to join this belief with that belief by way of using certain names. and Because what he's trying to do is gather you all to the slaughter, man. And the ones that is going to slaughter you is Esau, Edom. All right, reading on, happy is he that hath Yahweh, all right, of Jacob, Yahweh, the power of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in Yahweh, his power. So that's who our hope is in. And I just want to grab the Hebrew word all right, for hope. Matter of fact, I'll grab the word for help as well as hope. Now, the Hebrew word for, for help is Izar. And it says help, succor, all right, a, a one who's, who helps. And what is a succor? Succor is someone that's, that's an aid, you know, for another person. A succor is, is a help for another person. Well, Yahweh Shai is our succor. All right, Yahweh is our succor, not man. The word there for hope is Shabar. All right, which, um, what does the scripture say in the regard of hope? What is hope? All right. And the scriptures say that we're prisoners of hope. All right, for those of you that have no faith, all right, faith and hope goes hand in hand. You don't have any faith and you don't believe that Yahweh Shah is coming. So what you do is try to help yourself or try to help other, other people. All right, and the scripture says that um, <laughs> not to put your trust in princes nor in the sons of men, all right, who in the, the, the very same day their thoughts perish, which means that they get clapped, they get whacked. They get killed, they get murdered, they get murked. All right? And in the very same day, what they intended to do or thought that they were going to do, all right, it, it, it perished. All right, but not in the case of Yahweh Bar Shemia All right, our power is going gonna, is, is gonna to succeed. Now, as of yet, we haven't seen it with bodily eyes. All right, we haven't seen, you know, uh, Yahweh Shai face to face. We haven't seen Yahweh face to face, but through faith and hope, all right, we do patiently wait on them and for the scriptures to be fulfilled. Now, our power is 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 a, a power that is amazing, man. All right, and he will give you a sign 
to let you know that that he's there and that's the reason why you're seeing these cherries in the sky these cherries are signs man a uh, romans 8 and 24 for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for all right so you're seeing all of these different sightings you know of chariots and the scriptures identify them as the cherries of salvation but if we hope for that we see not then do we with patience wait for it so we with patience are waiting for the day when our lord and savior rises up to the prey and the scripture says that he's going to do that now his determination is to gather the nations this is his determination so when you see these nations gather together that's when our lord and savior is going to appear and he's going to fight for us and save us out of the time of trouble although we're going to be in it uh, Zephaniah 3 and 8 Therefore wait ye upon me, except Yahweh, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the, dev with the fire of my jealousy. So what does the scripture say again? Therefore wait ye upon me, except Yahweh, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nation, uh, gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them my indignation. It doesn't say, wait until you see, all right, certain individuals, or right, certain you know so-called black-led groups rise up against, all right, the prey. All right, the Lord said, wait on me, man, and that's what we have to do. All right, so we have hope. That Yahweh Shai is going to come and deliver us. Alright. And we know this is going to happen. And how do we know it? We know it through faith. And that we also know it through the signs of the scriptures being fulfilled. Alright. Seeing the signs of the scriptures. Alright. Seeing the, uh, the, 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 the signs of the chariots in heaven. Alright. We know that our power exists. And there's going to be many more of them. All right. You know, there's going to be many more of them. And when you see cherries, you might see a cluster, you know, and that's just a few. That's not even touching the surface of how many there truly are. All right. I remember a video uh, that's entitled uh, the elders, you know, see, you know, uh, something along the lines of uh, a host of chariots, you know, and there was a cluster of chariots, there's going to be even more than that, you know, covering the skies. The scripture says that the, that the sky shall be filled with his glory. And the glory that he's going to come in, that power that he's going to come in, is going to be that those chariots. And when they come, yeah, these nations are going to try to fight against him, but it's going to be to no avail. All right, because their arm is flesh, but our arm is power. Yahweh Shah is coming with power. Psalms 108. In beginning at uh, verse 3. I will praise thee, O Yahweh, among the people. I will sing praises unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great above the heavens. And, th and thy truth reacheth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O Yahweh, above the heavens. And, the and thy glory above all the earth. That thy beloved may be delivered. Save with the right hand and answer me. So we understand by way of scriptures that the right hand of Yahweh is Yahweh Shai. All right. And the angels that are on the right hand side of the Most High Heavenly Father. All right. The good angels. Yahweh have spoken in his holiness. I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and meet out the valley of Sakoth. All right. Gilead is mine. Manasseh is mine. Ephraim also is the strength of mine head. Judah is my lawgiver. Moab is my washpot. Edom <laughs> will I cast out my shoe. All right, over Philistia, uh, uh, Philistia will I triumph. All right, who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Because right now, Esau, Edom is ruling over the world and they do have a strong military. All right, they've been ruling over us. We've been in captivity under, under them here within America. But who's going to lead. All right. Into Edom. All right. The one that's going to lead into Edom. Is going to be our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai. 
as is spoken within the scriptures, the book of Psalms, not Psalms, Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, verse 1, who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, in thy garments, like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the wide press alone, and of the people that was done with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will uh, stain all my raiment. You know, so by reading that, I don't have to explain why it says that um, he came from the, the, the wine fat and, and his, uh, uh, his garments looked as if he treaded the wine fat, as if he was stumping grapes. All right, because in this, in this metaphor, the grapes are going to be the people that he comes to destroy. All right, within his anger. All right, to, to, to liberate and to redeem the elect. All right, it's going to be the people. So this is the strong man that is going to lead us into, into Edom. Or to, or to lead into Edom, Salakia, to uh, pretty much take them down. Reading on, it says, give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. All right, now this is the point. Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Which means that <laughs> ain't no man upon the planet earth that can help you, you know, to deliver you from the hour of trouble. All right. Ain't no man upon the planet Earth that can help you to deliver you from the time of trouble. The only one that can save you, all right, is Yahweh Shai and the angels, all right, that he confessed you before. And that's the reason why, all right, this is the proper time, even while the, while the gates of uh, salvation is open, even while the gates of repentance is open, for you to confess the Lord, man. For you to confess Yahweh Shai, because the scripture says, he that confessed me, before men, I will confess him before the heavenly father and the angels. All right. Luke 12 and 8. Also, I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall I con him shall the son of man confess before the angels of God. All right. Him shall the most shall the son of man confess before the angels of God. And this is one of those scriptures that I was speaking on earlier in which Yahweh Shai is called the son of man. But this son of man is different from the son of man in Psalms the 146. All right, the son of man in Psalms 146 is actually speaking about a human being upon the planet Earth. All right, this particular son of man is speaking about our Lord and Savior in Luke 12 and 8. All right, but it's going to be our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, that comes to save us and to redeem us. All right, and as we confess Yahweh Shai and walk, all right, in the example of Yahweh Shai, he's confessing us before Yahweh and confessing us before the angels. All right, and he's going to send the angels to redeem the elect from the four corners of the earth. And they're going to defend and protect them. All right, when the Most High Heavenly Father is ready. We're going to still go through a time of trouble. All right, but we're going to be redeemed out of a time of trouble, man. Matthew 24 and 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Because when these nations gather together to fight in World War III and to try to subdue Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai is going to destroy them. But in the midst of that, nuclear missiles will be shot off to different parts of the earth. And this is the stars that are far from heaven. Which is called, which will cause the the heavens and the earth to be shaken, man. All right, and really heavens in the regard of, you know, uh, uh, the heaven on earth. It says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And the power is those chariots that He's coming in. All right, those cherries is is powerful. All right, they can do things that that the the vehicles of man cannot do. The vehicles of man can be destroyed by lasers. They can be destroyed by fire. They can be destroyed by, you know, uh, explosions. All right, they can they can crash. They can get stuck. They can break down. They can malfunction. But it's not so with the chariots. The chariots are perfect. And he shall send his angels with a great sound. Of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, 
from the ends of one uh, from one end of heaven even to the other. So that's how the elect is going to be gathered. They're not going to be saved by men. All right. Second Chronicles, the 32nd chapter in verse seven, which reads, it says, be strong and courageous. All right, which is this is going back to the time of Sennacherib, our right, king of Assyria, was sent his servant Rab Shakai, our right, who blasphemed the Most High Heavenly Father, and pretty much tried to put fear in the hearts of the Israelites that Yahweh couldn't save them. All right, which they prayed and they fasted, and the Most High Heavenly Father did deliver them by way of sending the angel, all right, who destroyed a great host of the king of Assyria. One angel can do a lot of damage. All right, but there's going to be multiple angels, all right, that comes and in, in, in chariots. So imagine the great destruction and calamity that they're going to cause. All right, we're not alone, although it may seem as if we're alone because you can't look unless your eyes are open and see the angels and see, you know, how many chariots there are that are out there. But they're waiting. They're there and they're waiting. All right, and they're in formation and they're getting ready. And how do we know that they're getting ready? Because we can see certain signs and things that are happening in the earth. All right, these nations are gathering together for World War III to fight in this great war. And when they fight, guess what? Yahweh Shai and the angels are going to fight. And they're going to completely destroy them. So be strong and courageous. All right, be not afraid nor dismayed all right, for the king of Assyria. And then this regard, we can say, for the, the king of America or the kings of America, all right, the kings of Edom that are ruling through America, nor for the multitude that is with him, for there be many more with us than with them, which um, Esau is getting ready to make it mandatory to receive a vaccination. And for those that refuse, you better believe they're going to go house to house. There's going to be another coronavirus lockdown. They're going to go from house to house. All right. There's going to be complete chaos. The cities are going to be locked down, man. It says, with him is an arm of flesh. But with us is Yahweh our power to help us to fight for uh, to fight our battles. All right. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, the king of Judah. So the point being, it says, for there be more with us than with, with, with him. And this is, isn't the only place where this is mentioned within the scriptures. When you go to 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, verse 17, all right, when Elisha and his servant was uh, surrounded, all right, this, the, uh, the, the man that was with him became afraid, all right, and he, and he asked, what shall we do? And Elisha prayed that his eyes would be open. And when his eyes were open, he saw, he saw the chariots. He saw angels. He saw the chariots. All right, encamp around him. And if you could see that, man, your confidence would be strengthened. All right, but your confidence should be strengthened just alone by the scriptures saying that the Most Heavenly Father can deliver. All right, your faith should be in the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. This is the book of 2 Kings, the sixth chapter, verse 15. It says, And when the servant of the man of Yahweh was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host. Uh, can pass the city both with horses and chariots and his servant said unto him alas my master how shall we do and he answered him he answered fear not for there be many there be with us said Salakia, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them and Elisha prayed and said Yahweh I pray thee open his eyes that he may see and Yahweh opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the multitude was full of horses and chariots and fire around about Elisha. <laughs> That's, hey man, if you can see that, you'll be charged up. All right, which we got a glimpse of, of, of the chariots. All right, uh, uh, Saturday after camp, you know, when we were in Chicago, all right, we got a glimpse of the chariots of Yahweh Bashib Yahweh Shai. They're there, brothers. All right, and they're going to redeem and save us. And as it says within the scriptures, the book of Psalms, the 68th chapter, verse 8, it says, 
the uh, uh, Salakia. The earth shook. Salakia, that's not it. Uh, 68 and 17. It says the chariots of Yahweh are 20,000, even thousands of thousands of uh, Salakia. The chariots of Yahweh are 20,000, even thousands of angels. All right, Yahweh is among them as in Sinai, the holy place. So, 20,000, even, even thousands of angels. <laughs> Man, and they're all going to come and they're going to be seen in the heavens. They're going to be seen in the heavens and we're going to behold them and the world is going to behold them. All right, but to them, it's going to be a fearful sight. They're going to mourn when they see it. But us, we're going to rejoice because we understand that these are our salvation. All right, so there'll be many more with us. There'll be many more with us. So we're not afraid. All right, and not that there'll be many more with us. We just understand that the Most High Heavenly Father governs the, 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 the earth. All right, he governs the heaven and the earth and all things that are therein. All right, he's the power. All right. And he's going to send his son and the angels to redeem us, you know, to save us. All right. So keep that faith. There'll be many more with us. Inshallah.